Denver, what's up? It's me, Tom Segura. This is my tour bus. It's so much nicer than Burt's. That doesn't matter. Anyway, I've added a second show at Ball Arena on July 24th. Get tickets right now. They're at TomSegura.com slash tour. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I've got special guests, big surprises, and we will drink Coors all night instead of this bullshit coffee. It says way too much milk. What'd you do? What are the secrets about your chick? Like, like she? Well, I mean, I don't know how much I can say, but she is she private? Ah, eh, she's cool. She's a she's an open casket, but she's uh <laughs> she likes insults and be mean to me and hold me down and you know really degrade. It's bad though. One time we were fucking and you know call me a whore, call me a slut, call me a tell me I'm this, and I was like ah oh, you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that did not. That didn't go over well. Hundred <laughs> percent. Cheers. I agree. Tom is fat and racist. <laughs> what a great way to start an episode, Mark. Oh, did we get Mark's statement in there? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, guest bear today, Mark Normand. Hey, hey, good to be here. Mark Normand. Woo, boy, we're both hurting. It's like we, we fucked last night. It's awkward. I'm hungover. I'm gay. <laughs> I'm pushing through. I, I, I got three hours of sleep. Can I tell you what fucking makes me so frustrated? Uh-oh, you're... Is is no you wait, is not what we're talking about last night. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep it moving. I thought you were gonna talk about your impotence, but we're gonna we're gonna push through. I so like so like I met you before my wife, my wife's friends, John Mann's my cameraman, and my assistant Peter, right? Yeah. I met you before all of them. Oh yeah. I introduced you to all of them. Yes. And all they do is tell me how funny you are and i go yeah you wouldn't know him if it wasn't for me like uh, that it's so fucking frustrating and they're like they're like no you leanne said i go well, i'm doing a uh, two bears guest with mark norman she goes oh how lucky are you and i was like <laughs> i was like no i'm really lucky i'm very lucky i was like but hold on let's be very clear the only reason you know him is me so like it's it's you know it's like it's like uh it's like introducing people to cocaine, and then they just kind of look over their dealer's shoulder to like, how do I, how do I get more? And you're right. like, I'm the one that's selling it to you. Yeah, wow, I'm honored. I, I, I do well with 52 year old moms, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad I didn't dose you that time because it already gave me a, a hit. But yeah, thank you, Leanne. I appreciate it. How lucky are you? She goes, uh, I don't know if we've been. <laughs> I don't know what tour dates I've announced or I haven't yeah, announced. It's all a blur. It's all a blur. But there's there's another one coming up. I don't even know if we've announced it or not. But uh, and I and obviously I, I mean, anytime we do something really big, I always want Mark with me because I'm like he's first of all, obviously hands down one of my favorite comics to watch do stand up. I, I legit. All right, you can't keep complimenting me. It, it gets weird. But the funnest hang. You're all a fun right. hang. Yeah. We, we can have a good time. Because you're an alcoholic. Yeah, I like to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I shit blood this morning. So uh, we like to drink. We like to chop it up. And we both love comedy. We can get hammered and talk comedy like nerds. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. I wish my wife could do that. No, no, you don't. Really? Yeah, you want her to stay a lady. What do you What do you talk to your what, your girlfriend about? I don't know. <laughs> that's a good question. Current events. I don't know, that's a great question. Do you have a do you have a, do you have a talking list of things? You yeah, like a, yeah. So uh, the Ukraine's in the news. Yeah. How about that Kanye? <laughs> Putin, huh? Yeah, no, we, we have our pillow talk. We do the best talking laying in bed, four in the morning, just laying on our side, staring at each other, getting all googly-eyed, you know? It, really, so wait, so wait, do you... I could never turn it off, like sexually. Yeah. So I could, I could never... I am Bert the whole time. Until it goes in, and then I turn into the saddest individual in the world of just like. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> I get all puppy doggy. Yeah, it gets bad. Really? We, we talk about everything. We we love uh, we love talking George Floyd, and you you name it. We'll go all in. I'm <laughs> talking George Floyd. <laughs> whatever, whatever's clever. <laughs> all right. What uh, what's the most awkward? One nice day you've ever had. Oh, my God. Jeez, Louise. Uh, well, the morning is always weird, but... Uh, I've never had... An, I've never had... I'm, I'm, no, I've never had... I've had sex with a, a woman, but I knew her for a couple days. Yeah. I've never really had a one-night stand, I think. Maybe, like, maybe, 
No, yeah, no, no, no. When I was in uh, high school, college I we me and my friend met these two gals at a bar, and uh, it was last call. You know, last call, you're like, we got to we gotta make something happen. So we meet these two gals, and we both hooked up with them in his childhood bedroom, me on the floor with my gal, him on the bed with his gal, and I finished in like two seconds, and I had to watch him and his lady just really go at it, and it was brutal because she was like, "Man, I wish I was with that stud," <laughs> and I was done, and I was like, "So how about uh, about that uh, that Fresh Prince? You see uh, Goodwill Hunting, you know, or whatever was out? How about OJ?" And how about OJ? <laughs> they were just plowing away, and he was flipping her over, and legs were in the air, and uh, me and her were just like sitting there, like you know. With curlers in her hair, Troy on the phone wire. It was brutal. I've never. I've. I'm really fast at sex. Yeah, same. But is I asked. I asked T O. Terrell T- Owens. Oh wow. I asked T O. How long should sex be? And he's like three minutes. And 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 it's so funny because he was being honest. Yeah. J B Smooth was smooth or smooth. V. Smooth. V. That's interesting. When when a when a comic at, like when a black comic puts the. Uh, the uh, the spelling of the name in their thing and you're forced as a white dude to be like what's up uh, damn fool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do the damn thing right right yeah that's true how damn are fool, you damn fool's a funny fucking comic you ever seen damn fool i've never heard of him no. damn fool i hope he's still doing stand-up he went he went up and murdered we were in like uh somewhere in michigan and he fucking murdered mm. and he murdered with a white audience they fucking loved him damn fool dude oh, there he, is he is funny he is funny as fucking shit. His name's Kevin Simpson. And uh, I told him, I was like, I would lose the damn fool. Because I think you alienate. I told the him whitey. this. I, was, I, well, I think you alienate white audiences. And his take was, I'm black. I, audi- I alienate white audiences immediately. Like like in that in that no uh, carpool of soccer moms is going to go see him right. regardless. And he's like, I'm going to be. I was, it was when I was giving it. I was giving advice I shouldn't give. Well, I, I think that's a misconception. Like, uh, I grew up on uh, Comic View. Remember how many times you'd watch Chris Tucker or whoever, uh, Bruce Bruce, and, you know, it was a lot of Michael Jackson impressions, but it was the funniest shit ever in the 90s. Yeah. Dude, uh, co- uh, Comic View, I didn't see Comic View as much, but uh, Def Jam? Oh, yeah. You ever seen Bernie Mac's Def Jam set? Of course, of course. It's the best Def Jam set. I, sometimes you need that pressure in a set I'm to be able to... Yeah, I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm big boned. <laughs> I take my dick out. This whole room turns black. black. Yeah, yeah. God great. damn it. The yeah. confidence. I try to channel that when I'm nervous. I try to, but I can never get to that level. That kind of confidence, that that taking over room, because that was the worst show ever. The stories about how everybody was bombing. And he's like, I'm not bombing. Yeah. I'm going to kill it. And he did. Yeah. And, 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 uh, the guy that went before him, that, that's the story always is who goes before the yes. guy in those bombs. Who creates that thunderstorm? Right. Do you remember who it was? No. Hamburger. No way. Yeah. That's what they said. And you know, sometimes I've seen this happen. A hamburger was a uh, hamburger. Jones was that his name? We typed that in. I believe so. Um, he was. Uh, I think he wore a cowboy hat. Yep. And it was like a little bit of a. Yeah. There it is. Bit of a gimmick. Little, a little bit. I'm not being. I don't want to mean to be disrespectful. No, but a little, no. But if you're in Harlem and you're wearing a cowboy hat on stage, it it probably kills everywhere. But it's a fine line whether or not the gimmick sells. It, that's the craziest thing. Because like, if a gimmick doesn't work, Oof. it's like a big act out. If you do a big act out, and you're killing. It's beautiful. But if you do a big act out to nothing, it is painful. Uh, colleges, <laughs> gimmicks don't work at colleges. You think? Uh, well, I, I've been there. I've seen comics with a gimmick go up at a college, and just the energy shifts. I've never. I mean, I never did. I do do colleges every now and then. I'm doing Pittsburgh coming up. I'm nervous. University of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They oh. booked me. They they reached out. Really? Yeah. I think the young kids. Not to throw away or digress. Uh, the younger kids now are way filthier. You know, I feel like we got like kind of PC for a while, and then the kids in the younger generation are like, "Bring it on!" Yeah, call me horrible things, say horrible things. It was, uh, my daughters are not that way; they're very PC. Oh, how old, what are oh, we talking here? I don't know how old they are, but uh, <laughs> fifteen and seventeen. Jordan. Oh, hey, anyone else hard? But yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's a fun age. 
Well, maybe I'm wrong, but they live in L.A. also. L.A. is a different beast. L.A. LA is a fucking... I might need a cocktail, Nadav. I uh, might need a cocktail. <laughs> Can I just have a little something to pick me up? I, I was yeah, We we'll partied late last we'll night. We did. I'm, hurt. I'm looking at my face in the mirror of a fat cunt. Uh, dude, well, I think that's my shot you're looking at. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. I was like, I've aged. <laughs> I've aged. I look terrible. Uh, I'm, by the way, I've been being so healthy lately. Yeah. So fucking healthy. Do you know what really helps? Taking a Xanax first thing when you wake up. First thing. First thing we wake up. What? You know well, what really helps? Barbiturates. <laughs> pain pills. What are you Benzos. crazy? Yeah. A little a little chip of a I ax so what I do on my on my uh blood blood pressure medication is I, I line it up for the week and I get to make sure I'm very O C D about it. But then I grab one Xanax and I toss it in. Mm. Just in on any day. And then that day that day like a lot of times I'll see it and I'll pull it out and I'll be like, I have a busy day. But sometimes I'll I won't see it. I'll throw it in my thing, I'll throw it in my mouth, and then I count my pills on my tongue. What? I know. I, I don't Easy, know. Anna Nicole. Look what's <laughs> going on here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he wants one too. He just wants a sip. He's got to do Rogan today. Just give me a nip. Yeah, I got to do the biggest podcast on the planet while you know foggy, hungover. And so I will. Um, we're talking about that. And then uh, let's break down. Hold on. Let me wait. Wait. Down. I want to hear about the benzos. So uh, sometimes I'll put them my. Pills on my tongue, and I'll taste the Xanax, and I go, motherfucker. I think I just put a Xanax in my mouth. Yeah. What I did the other day is I didn't put a full Xanax, because that is a game changer. That kind of changes your day. Oh, that'll ruin you. I took a chip of a Xanax and tossed it in. Like, 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 like I would say, so I, I take half a milligram if I ever take a Xanax. Oh, God. <coughs> For the folks at home, it is uh, 10, 14 in the morning. Just Nine, a, 9, 14 just a, in the morning. Is it what? Oh, I'm on New York time. It's 9.14. Jesus Christ, that's even worse. Hey, tell them about Fully Loaded, Mark. Fully Loaded Tour. We're doing baseball parks. Ah. We're doing arenas. We're going to Tennessee, Mississippi. You name it. Fully Loaded Tour.com. Festival. Fully Fest Loaded Festival.com. Yeah, I mean, some of the greats. Uh, I don't want to give out too many names. Does Jesus. this come out before the Greek? Does this come out before May 5th? I hope you enjoyed us at the Greek. Uh. Oh. I just had a I just had a disc golf tournament that morning. Oh, I'll see you there. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's I started a... leaning into all my ideas. Yeah. It's like why not throw everything against the fucking wall and see what sticks, right? Well, that's the Xanax talking. So. <clears throat> oh man, I can't see. I just take a Xanax and I'm not. I'm so chilled out that it. You don't have any comedy in you. Uh, I, it's hard to do. It's hard to do stand up. I can't. I can't do. You know, I can't do radio the next day after a Xanax. I don't take enough Xanax, by the way. Like, I don't, <laughs> enough, enough. I don't take a lot. Cheers. It's great having you, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, it's I don't I don't drink I don't take them often, but because usually I'll catch it and I will take it out. But I, the other day I put a chip in, like just a little chip. Mm. I take half a milligram. Maybe it's, uh, but and it it I mean I didn't realize how much fucking chaos I was operating in. Oh Cause you yeah. Take a, Cause I don't take them often, and if I do take them, um, by the way. I, in the past two weeks, I've taken two Xanax, which is a lot for me. Uh, I, you know? Oh, that's good. And that's a lot. But I normally take, I'll get a thing of 30 and it'll take me six months to go through them. Damn. And then they, and they expire by the time I usually get to the end of them. Right. Um, can I get one of those? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, I can't. You know why? Because if you died, I go to jail. I'm not. Isn't that a fucking die. such a bullshit law? Yeah, that sucks. Except for the guy that gave Kate uh, Winston fentanyl. Winston? Kate went Kate Quigley. Yep. Yeah. Did you ever listen to that podcast you did about getting? No. It's pretty fucking good. I won't. I won't tell her. It's horrible that I said it's pretty good. A bunch of people died, but wow. it was. It's. A, I mean, it's. I mean, it's. A, it's. A, it's an intriguing podcast. Okay. That she does. It's on her podcast. Uh, fuck, I forget her podcast. Two girls, one fentanyl. <laughs> Date fails. Date fails with Kate Date Quigley. Date fails. Yeah, it's a fascinating. It makes you scared to do drugs ever again. Yeah, totally. It makes you want to lean into fucking prescription drugs. I know. That's why I'm asking you for them, and not uh, some other guy off the street. <laughs> but, but it's but it's crazy that like if I gave you a Xanax and then you drank a ton, took it, and then uh, I and died, I would go to jail. Yeah, I've done that before. I took a totem pole. Pull up, give this a goog. They're called totem poles or green hulks. <gasps> Tell the story. I took one. I've told the story a few times, but uh, I took one and I was like, I don't want to be hungover. Me and my friend are going tubing 
in San Antonio in the morning. There they are. Look how big that is. That is whoa. That's a green Hulk. And you're supposed whoa, to take. I want the one that says Xanax on it. Oh, yeah, that's classic. Oh, man, what the fuck do I have? I have the fucking knockoff Alorazepams. Yeah, I dated her, black chick. But uh, <laughs> so I took a whole one, and I don't even touch this stuff ever. We got hammered one night, just tequila shots, tequila shots. But we're going tubing in the morning, so I want to get a good night's sleep, pop the whole thing. I slept for like 38 hours. Hang on. Unpack that. Yeah, it was bad. I I got kicked out of my hotel room. They pulled me out of the room in the Red Roof Inn in San Antonio, put me in the lobby with my bags. They packed my bags. I got all kinds of shit in my bag, money and dildos and other <laughs> shit, you know, props that on the road. I got a rubber chicken. And they put it all in a bag and put me in the lobby, and I just slept in the lobby for like another 12 hours. People were coming in, checking in. What the fuck? Yeah. So do, do you have any anxiety the next – when you wake up and you start working, your body starts working again. Yeah. And you and you take your first shit in fucking thirty six hours. Yeah, and check the how much piss is in your pants. I know, right? How, well, what like do you have any anxiety about like about your your hands working right or your feet working right or your brain or? Well, my friend was like calling me, calling me. Why isn't he answering? What the hell? And so he just showed up at the hotel, sees me in the lobby, and he's like, "What the fuck happened?" They're like, "Will you get rid of this guy?" And he picks me up, and he said my feet were dragging. He took me to a bodega or a you know a corner store. And he bought me like a couple of seven ups and a water and all that and brought me back to his house and was just like, and then eventually we got IVs. Holy shit. Yeah. And I came to, we did a show that night. Really? Yeah. I was off, but yeah, it was fun. So wait, and, and you think, was it laced or something? I think so, but I'm also a lightweight with pills. So it could have just been me not used to it, taking that much at once with all that booze. It's funny you hear about people ov overdosing on, I will not, I, the reason, one of the reasons I do the Xanax trick to myself is that if I take a chip of Xanax, I will not drink. I will oh, not Oh, that's drink. smart. See? Oh, no, I know, I know, I, I know myself. You're still responsible. Well, I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of death. I had a problem with Xanax. I had a legit problem really? with it. Really? Yeah, yeah, with, uh, when I first started dating Leanne, I was unaware, it was prescribed to me and I was unaware of how addictive benzos were. Mm. And so, um, and, and by the way, benzo withdrawal is you can die from. Mm. So it's like, it's they won't take you in rehabs if you're addicted to benzos. Yeah, My buddy was addicted to benzos and they took him to rehab and the rehab said, no thanks, get him off benzos first. That's how fucked up benzos are. And by the way, I joke about Xanax, but for real, Xanax is a bad fucking drug. My cardiologist, it is. my cardiologist, told me because uh, I, I was telling him, my, you know, about my throw it in my blood pressure medicine thing, and he was like, obviously he's a doctor, so he's like, the fuck are you doing? I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man, just like a little day off for myself. And he yeah. was like, don't ever do that. He was like, don't ever do that. And by the way, don't ever take Xanax. It fucking melts your brain. Do not take Xanax. And I was like. Okay, wow. Wow, just zillions of Americans are taking it every day. Yeah, I'm not taking you on my tour bus. <laughs> See, I, I got the chip when I took the vaccine. But either way, <laughs> um, I, it's that, that withdrawal shit is so scary because uh, I remember when the, the peak of the pandemic, when it was new and scary and everybody was staying inside, I was staying in Beantown with my lady, and everything was closed but the liquor store. They call it a package store out there. Yeah. And I was like, I went in there. I bought a case of beer and a, and a rack of White Claws and all this. And I was like, how come you guys are open? They said, we have to be open legally because if alcoholics can't get booze, they'll die. And I was like, God, Oh, damn. my God. Don't ever let me get there. Yeah. So I, I bought an extra case. Put this over here. Yeah. You know, that's that the uh, I said to someone we were watching some documentary about pills. It's heartbreaking when you see someone really addicted to pills. Yeah. And I said, I said out loud. I, it's so funny, uh, prescriptions aren't my thing. I, I, I don't really give a fuck about them. And Leanne was there and she went, that's a lie. Mm. And I was like, what? She goes, you've been addicted to pills twice. And I went, no, I haven't. I actually said, you know what I, my statement was? Painkillers aren't my thing. They don't work on me. Like, I can't feel them. Like, Tom loves them. Like a Vicodin? Tom loves pain pills. Everybody loves them. I don't, they, I don't feel them. When I got surgery on my arm, they gave me like the highest one you could get, and I stopped taking it. So I was like, I don't, I, I don't feel it, and I know that I'm constipating myself, 
I'm still in pain. I'd rather just deal with the fucking pain and get it over with. Yeah. Damn. But, I think people love them. I and mean, people drink with them. I they said, were big when I was in college. I said to Leanne, I said, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, pain pills aren't my thing. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't even give a fuck about them. She goes, you, you were addicted to pain pills. I was like, no, I wasn't. She's like, when you fell off the, off the waterfall. And I went, oh, fuck, I was. Because I got Oxycontin. Not oxy, Oxycodone. What, whatever. I got one of the Oxys. Oh, those Oxy bad. <laughs> and I was eating them. Prescri- they were prescribed to me. Meaning, he said, take one every four hours. Jesus. Four hours with a, um, you get it ready for this, with a Valium. So I was getting an oxy and a Valium every four Who hours. Was this Michael Jackson's doctor? I, well, I, well, I was in so much fucking pain. I fall off a waterfall. Last story I'm going to tell, and then Mark will talk the whole well, episode. That, first of all, that sounds like a pill addiction. Like, oh, you heard about Birdie fell off the waterfall. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like when you start getting back into pills. Do you want to tell me? You want me to show? Hey, can you t- see if you can f- see a picture of me on a stretcher uh, on Instagram? I, I'm such a fucking jackass. I fall off a waterfall. I, it's it's a horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, look at how small my arm was. Did you Damn, see that picture? Look at that. That's, that's after surgery. Look at how small it was. Wow. Gross. I was I photoshopped it. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> I do the opposite to my dick all the time. <laughs> and uh so I uh you guys know I love the break-in protection that my Simply Safe home security systems give me, but it's not always outside forces that you need Simply Safe's protection from. A few months ago, Simply Safe customer fell asleep with food still in the oven. This could have led to thousands of dollars in damages to his home or worse. Luckily, he had a comprehensive Simply Safe system equipped with everything to prevent break-ins and smoke detectors to sniff out fires. After waking up to the alarm, he got a call from Simply Safe Professional Monitoring. He believes Simply Safe saved his life that night. We have staff here at YMH Studios that rely on Simply Safe to keep them safe, and they love it. Protecting people when their guard is down is just one of the reasons more than 4 million people use and love Simply Safe. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com/slash bears. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Just go to simplysafe.com slash bears. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. And it's so hard to get yourself out of that rut with things like just exercise. If you're feeling a lack of motivation, it's hard to get on the treadmill or go work out or even get out of bed for some time for some people. We associate burnout with work. That's not always the cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out, and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. It, it's not always just fixable in your head. You can't just lay in bed and try to figure out what's going on with you. Sometimes talking to someone, that's the way to get out of your own head. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable, much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Two Bears, One Cave listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bears. That's BetterHelp.com slash Bears. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. I fall off a waterfall. Yeah. They can't get a helivac in there. They cut me out of a dry suit. I then have to crawl on my hands and knees, I think... They put pants on me. So I was in my underwear. I was in a dry suit. Did you hit a rock? What happened? I was rappelling, and uh, it, it's really interesting. Don't ever get too comfortable in anything you do. When it comes to like, high, like surfing, uh, rappelling, ice climbing, I've done I've done everything there is to do. Mm. But don't ever get too comfortable. Always be aware of the danger that's sure. around you. Uh, I heard listen to Nathan Florence say that the other day, as he was like, "I'm hyper aware of just how how quick things can turn bad." So. I post this picture like a fucking jackass Whoa. before I called my wife. Ah, uh, <laughs> damn! I posted it before I called my wife. I have glasses on because I was crying. Wow! Yeah, I was crying. You know, you want to know? You want to know a weird part? So ah. I crawl on my hands and knees out of a ravine, two hundred and ten feet up. It's, it's vertical. Yeah. So I, to crawl on a trail on my hands and knees because I couldn't. My legs didn't work. My legs worked, but I couldn't 
move them up like this. Uh -huh. I, I could only kind of shuffle them. Yeah. So I just had to kind of crawl. I get up to the top. My whole crew's with me. I am laying on the ground. I'm in the most pain I've ever been in. I'm crying. I'm in crying. I'm in that much pain. I'm crying from the pain. And I'm also in my... And uh, these two girls walk up and they see the camera crew. They see me on the ground. And they're like, what's happening? And I'm listening. I can hear them. And they're like, uh, they're like, oh, it, our host of our show fell. And they're like, who is he? And it's like, oh, he's, his name's Bert. He's a comedian, but he hosts a show on Travel Channel called Trip Flip. And they're like, oh, okay. And then the girl, one girl comes over as if I hadn't heard her. And she goes, hey, I'm a huge fan. Do you mind if I get a pic? Oh, wow. Oh, I wanted to fucking turn into a grizzly bear and fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Just fucking kill her. <laughs> I know. And so, so they, they, they get me out of the the woods that day and it's i mean it's the most you ever had an experience where you go i don't very simply uh, this is something i think you relate to hungover as fuck mm. you wake up in the hotel room and you realize you have all day of travel to get to where you you have to be yeah and and you look at you go how am i going to get through today right daunting and then at the end of the day you're like man i got through it it was, wasn't that hard as i thought well imagine that if you're at the bottom of a ravine and you realize I need to end up at a hospital, I need to crawl out on my hands and knees. I then have an hour hike out that I don't know how I'm going to do. Uh, I then have a fucking hour drive to the hospital, right. all of which I don't know how I'm going to do. Right. And so I, uh, it was, that was, I remember that, I remember that feeling of this isn't possible. So we get on a fucking stretcher in the back of an ATV, the most pain I've ever been in my life entire life Bumpy. i think my back's broken i think it's broken because <laughs> wow. i can't nothing's working on me i get to the hospital and they give me dilaudid and immediately i'm i'm i can walk around like, what is that a drug it's it's pharmaceutical heroin uh, oh it's what i watched them give it to tommy i watched them give it to tommy when he broke his arm and broke his leg <laughs> and uh i could his mouth changed like he went like he, he was like it was like this and the thing, and they go, "Well, all right, we'll give you a little dilaudid." And he went like this. <laughs> He's like, "Oh man, that stuff really works!" And it immediately, immediately, yeah. And so then the guy, the doctor's like, "I didn't break my back. It was a contusion. Out of all things, it was a contusion. Ooh. Didn't break anything. It was just a contusion." I swear to God, I, as crazy as it sounds, it felt like a broken back, but I couldn't use any of the muscles in my back. If I didn't have my pills, I passed out that night. I, I, he gives me pills. I went out that night. I had a drink. Wow. Like, I, like all of a sudden, I was totally fine. I had head cheese for the first time in my life. <laughs> I was giggling with people. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm actually good. Should we keep continuing the episode? And so everyone travels here. I was like, oh, we'll do it. I get to the hotel. I I did a fucking, I did a, 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 I did a, a podcast intro. Uh -huh. I'm high as fuck. I'm eating pills. I go to bed, and I, without thinking, I put my pills where I can't reach them. I wake up in the middle of the night having to piss, and I can't move. I can't move my back. I can't move everything, and I have to piss in the bed. Yeah, I've been there. <sighs> Dude, uh, my sound guy came in. They, cause they, they, I, wasn't, I didn't go down to call time. I, I couldn't get out of bed. I was stuck there. I was yeah. in the, and all my pain pills ran out. All the Dilaudid ran out. The, the Valium is a, is a muscle relaxant. My sound guy came in and I was in my bed crying because I was like, I'm in pain, but I'm crying because I'm like, what if no one finds me? Like, I'm having panic about it. Yeah. And he is like, I remember <laughs> his name is John Sales. I remember he comes in and he just goes, oh, buddy. Ah. <laughs> and he got me up. I took my pills. And then, and I called Leanne. You want to know the gangster part of the story? I called Leanne. I had a gig in Aspen that weekend. I was going to do the filming. And then that weekend, I was going to be in Aspen. And I told Leanne, I said, uh, I don't think I can do the gig. It was 25 grand. She goes, no, you can do it. Damn. She goes, load up on pain pills. I'll grab you. Isla and I are going to fly out. We're going to take you to Aspen. We'll get you Whoa, to Aspen. Oh, what a we, wife. It was, well, it's 25 grand. That's what she wanted. She saw the fucking price tag. She's like, I don't care how much you are. How much pain you are. I get it. A gig's a gig. But cut to two weeks later. I'm eating. I've, I'm through my prescription. I got another prescription. Uh, and I and I did, I did something I'm not really proud of is I called my i got another prescription from the north carolina doctor and i called my doctor in 
um, L.A. to get a prescription. Oh, you doubled up. Yeah, and Leanne found out. And she was like, I woke up one morning, I'm in bed. I reached over to get my pills. She's standing there. She has both of them in her hands. She goes, chick, 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 chick. She goes you're done, big boy. Damn. I said, what? She goes, you're done. I said, baby, give me one more just to get, start my day. She That's goes, what they all say. She said, nope. That's she how you got to do it. Poured them out. She's like, you're done. Cold turkey, big boy. Let's do it. Damn, get up. Yeah, what a shame. She could have sold those to Ralphie May at least. <laughs> Oh, that might have been too far. No. R.I.P. I I called Ralphie May the other day. What? Yeah. I I got bad news for you. (laughs) I don't know if you heard. Did you get the voicemail? I mean, Jesus. All right. This is this is horrible. Uh, Yeah. He liked the pills, I think. I think he did. Yeah. I I was uh, I got my wisdom teeth pulled out and my dad had to come get me from the the office. The what do you call it? Dentist. Dentist, Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, me and my dad, we're not close. We're very waspy. It's a very buttoned up relationship. And I'm fucked up because I'm on all the drugs from the, you know, I got the, the fat mouth and the gauze is coming out. How old are you? How old are you? 17. Okay. And uh, he's like, okay, son, we have to go. And I'm like, what's up, you fucking homo? Ah, I got him in a headlock and everything. And he's like, he's like, okay. Let me see that hog. Get that dick out, big guy. Yeah, I want to like, see where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like nut checking him and stuff, and uh, he's like, "Okay, son, let's get out of here." And he's like, "Got me by the by the shoulder," and I'm like, "Ah!" And I like purple nurpled him and everything, and it was it was super awkward. He he brought it up later, and it, he wasn't happy about it. For real? Yeah. Well, he's a he's a square guy. My parents walked in went when, when I was I have a lot of teeth problems, a lot. And the first time they started fixing them, I was in fourth grade, and. Uh, they gave me laughing gas for the first time, and my mom walked in. She goes, "How you doing, buddy?" And I, as an adjusted, kicked in, and I went, "This feels so fucking good." Yeah, <laughs> I'm in fourth grade, and my and my mom's like, uh, "This might be a problem." Yeah. Do you remember? Is is nitrous <laughs> laughing you pop gas? A beer, you're like, "Hey, you come, Guzzler, get over here." <laughs> All right, sorry. Wait, do you remember the first? Do you remember the first buzz you got? I do. Yeah. Tell Boy, me that story. It was great. I uh, I was. At a party in, I was like 14 years old. These are very strong. Yeah, you really poured a heavy uh, Tito in there. Tito Ortiz. But uh, yeah, so I was at a party and I just had like my first vodka soda or whatever it was. And then I had my second one. I was like, whoo, baby, I am rolling. And that, it was like risky business. I like, slid onto the floor and I just started dancing. Really? Made out with a girl. It was great. That's uh. I remember, I remember hearing the phrase "liquid courage." Yeah, and going and going. What a cool, what a cool, like almost like how brilliant. Who wrote that? Ernest Hemingway. Mm-hmm. Like that's so fucking genius. It's pretty. That's dead exactly on. what I felt. I'm like punching fences. Yes, and going like oh, I could. Uh, I remember the first time I did cocaine. Whoa. Holy shit! Oh, let's hear it. Uh, New Orleans. No way. Yeah, New Orleans. New Orleans. This is. Uh, this is. And like I said, I've never really had a problem with drugs, but I have had it rear its head at times. We were really into eating ecstasy in college, and sure. we went to we went to um, uh, Mardi Gras, and me and my buddy—I won't say his name—he's coming to my show in Nashville. Um, we were like, we need to get X, we need to get X. We want to have like we'll split a pill and we'll have a great fucking day, a mm-hmm. great night. And my buddy, who's been in and out of rehab his whole adult life, uh who I grew up with, best friends with him and his brother, best friends with their family. He says to me, um, I have Coke if you want to try Coke. And I was like, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I, I, I've known him since we were kids, and I never knew that he had Coke. And I was like, do you do it? And he goes, I do. Um, but it's it's super, it's it's not the greatest thing because it it's pretty fucking awesome. And I yeah. went, how awesome? And he goes, I mean, you don't have to sell it to anyone. It, it's you know you just gotta try it yeah and, and you'll love it is this new orleans coke this was a because i feel like we wouldn't have the best coke down there uh we this is florida coke oh florida coke way better so he brings me into me and my buddy into a room and uh they have a rock of coke oh boy a rock and they have them to the rock they take a razor blade and shave it off oh yeah and crush it up and I did one line, and uh, just like on, out of the movies, one Tyler line, Bill, one line, and immediately I am numb from this tooth all the way over. Like I mean, I'm talking like down the center of my face. Yeah. I am numb from this tooth over, 
And he was like, do you want to do the other nose? The other, you want to do another line? And I was like, I think I should. because I, I can feel this side of my face, but I can't feel this side of my face. <laughs> I got to even out. Yeah. And so he's like, yeah. So I do another line. And uh, my first distinct memory of that cocaine was sitting on a trolley car with my buddy, my other friend. Me and him, we left everyone. We went down to Bourbon Street. Yeah. And I felt like I could rip the the poles out of the thing. I felt, I go, I actually know. If I want to, I could rip this pole out and take it with me for the night and have like a nice stick to walk yeah. around with. But I'm smart enough to know that if I do that, everyone will know I'm on Coke. Wow. <laughs> this is a great ad for Coke. And... And so me and me and my other me and my buddy we we got a bag from him and we went into porta potties and we did little key bumps for the rest of the night and then <laughs> sat st when and and by the way didn't drink we didn't have that one drink what we were I mean we were just walking around Bourbon Street like this yeah 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 like just fucking firing on all cylinders we go back to my buddy's house we pass out in my car Jeez. Uh, and I and I sleep pretty good yeah. oddly enough, shockingly enough. I wake up the next morning with the most acute searing anxiety I've ever had in my That's life. That's what I hear. Like I'm saying, ain't heart racing, uh, and we still had Coke. We still had Coke, and so and I was supposed to bring some back. Yeah. So I we get my car. We all start to drive back. No one in the car knows I have. This is back when if you got pulled over with Coke, if you get pulled over with Coke, now you're in trouble, right? Yeah, I think so. But back then, you really got in trouble, especially in the South. Yeah, oh, yeah. And so I at a rest area, I pull over. I take the large eight ball we have, throw it out. Good for you. And then, well, I kept a little bit. Ah. Kept a little bit. The one bag we had shared the night before, I hold on to that. Yep. Take it back. I stayed up all night in my bed. I didn't sleep that night. Searing fucking anxiety. I mean, I I'm talking rock through a window. Uh, Fucking... Turbulence. I'm talking the most accurate anxiety I've ever had in my life. What and do you mean, like just replaying old fuck ups in your life? Uh, no, it's, 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 it's this. This decision was a big decision that I made, Bert. You fucked up. You now are gonna have a heart attack. You're gonna have a heart attack oh. for the day after because uh, you did coke. And and then who is who are you? What kind of person are you that does right, cocaine? Right. I remember vividly remembering the look of myself staring into the mirror of me seeing the cocaine and my face right there. Ooh, I remember that so vividly. That's I was like, I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. And then cut to like three nights later, well, we had that little bit left. And we're like, we should try it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had that feeling when I lost my virginity to an older lady. And I think she was a prostitute, but she didn't charge me. But once we were finished, you know, she kind of rolls off me. We're next to each other in this hotel room in the Ramada. How old? How old? I was 16. It was New Year's Eve Eve of the millennium. So it was No, like, how old was she? <laughs> oh, I'm sure she was 55. What? Yeah, I mean, she looked like like Jennifer Aniston after a fist fight. Like, she wasn't <laughs> that bad looking, but she'd seen some winters. I'll say that. And nice lady, cool lady. And maybe she was younger, but in your 16-year-old brain, you think everybody's 90. You know, you think your babysitter is 58. Yeah. And she's probably like 21 or something. But she was a catcher's mitty. We'll say that, you know. <laughs> she, my favorite line of this whole podcast. She's seen a few winters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I remember laying there in the dark, having just had my first sexual experience, uh, intercourse, and a, the TV was on, just flickering in the distance, and a Disneyland commercial came on. And I couldn't hear it, but I remember being like, what the fuck have I done? What am I doing? Who am I? My whole innocence just fell out of me. I'm like thinking about my parents and I'm like, I got to get out of here. And, you know, I'm soft and there's jizz everywhere. And we went really went at it. And, Condom? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. She had a fucking drawer full of everything. You name it. It Jesus. was like butt plugs. In New Orleans? And, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I met her husband or maybe pimp. I don't know. But I had to get the fuck out of there. That, uh, when I lost my virginity... I remember uh, I, it was very bad. I won't recount it because I'm sure I've told it on this podcast, but it was very it was it was comical at best. Yeah, and it was but it was traumatic at worst. Meaning I was performed so poorly, sure that I had to assess who I was. Yeah, uh -huh. and and I remember going into this bathroom in a condo in Carrollwood of a, a dad who was going through a divorce and had a crash pad. Right. Yeah, that was where we were. And looking in the mirror, 
in that bathroom. I remember that house so vividly, and I'm or that a condo. I remember being in the bathroom and looking up the mirror and going, "Who the, who the fuck are you?" Now? Oh, the mirror. Nothing worse than the mirror. Oh, that you gets you every time. You're staring at yourself, going, "What did you do, buddy?" And then immediately, I was like, that night. I'm, the next night, I'm laying in bed going, I have AIDS, and she's pregnant. I would do the same thing, always to AIDS. AIDS? Can I tell you how fucking irresponsible the fucking a the CDC was with this telling everyone how AIDS worked? I know. I because like every commercial was AIDS. We had Rent, the, the musical about AIDS. It was all AIDS. Magic the guy, Johnson. The guy died from an aneurysm. Who? The fucking... The guy who wrote Rent oh, died really? from an aneurysm, and everyone's like, it's AIDS, yeah. AIDS, AIDS. <laughs> yeah. I, I, dude, I thought, I thought, first of all, everyone had AIDS. Same. I, I was like, you well, why, You got to wear a condom. You don't want to get AIDS from everyone. Right. Because everyone has AIDS. I remember my buddy had sat, my buddy has had a lot of unprotected sex. One of my buddies. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling him, hey, man, I'm worried you're going to get AIDS. Yeah. He laughed at me. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have been more meatheaded, and I'm, I wasn't. I'm, I'm, I've always been very sensitive, overly sensitive at times, but I'm also very sensitive to other people. So, like, you know, it's not great for comedy, but like, you know, when they said, you know, uh, everyone can get AIDS, I believed that. I really believed that. Yeah. And I, I had a ton of friends that were like, no guy, like, you're not getting AIDS from having sex with a chick in high school. That's not happening. And I remember going, hold on. It was on 2020. I remember saying that. It was wow. on 2020. Yeah. You can get AIDS from straight sex. And they're like, it is so. It marked, this lasted until I was in New York. I was 26 years old. I got a blowjob from a chick and I called my dentist. And I was like, Dentist? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I forget what a fool I am until I say it out loud. <laughs> you know? You're like, I blew this guy and I think I knocked a tooth out. And he goes, uh, his name was Nick. And I said, uh, I said, hey, man, you, what do you know about AIDS? And he goes, I mean, a, a, not much, but a little bit. Why? Like, I go, can you get it from a blowjob? And he goes, no. Oh, And I went, wow. no, 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 hold on. I didn't know that. Yeah, he goes, no, 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 you can't. I went, hold on, because I let this girl suck my dick without a condom. And he goes, yeah, that, that's called a blowjob. Don't ever let a girl suck your dick with a condom on. <laughs> this is my dentist. <laughs> and, I, and, he, and, I, and I go, but yeah, but I'm worried I might have gotten contracted AIDS from her. And he was like, okay, I have a question. I remember the, the, he, these exact words. He goes, was there a copious amount of blood flowing out of her mouth as she was sucking your dick? And I was like, no, I, no there was no blood. And he goes, then don't worry. Yeah. He goes, if, if you punched her in the face a bunch and, she, and her teeth were broken and they were shattered and she was bleeding from her mouth and you were forcing your cock in her mouth. A gum job. Then I would worry about that. Wow. But so he goes, if it was just a woman sucking your dick, you're fine. And I went, and that was the last time in my life you got I worried. Hit. I worried. No, I, no, Leanne gives the best blowjob. Oh, before. really? Mine was horrible. Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. No, no. Secret time, secret time. The best blowjob. I could see that. Secret time. The like one of the deal closers. When I like, it was she gives such a great blowjob that I remember going. I'm going to marry you. Fuck her parent personality. Fuck her body. <laughs> fuck her face. Fuck, fuck all of her it. Fuck her face. If, exactly. If <laughs> this fucking blowjob is, it's it's uh, it's wet. It's the tits. Oh, it's gay. Oh, it's gay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark and I are trying to come up with new uh, words for cool. It's lunch. Is it was, it was, so last week I get two days off. Leanne says, let's go to the beach. Let's take the girls up to the beach. And let's hang out at the beach. We're not going to talk to anyone. And I said, great. I said, let me pack. She goes, oh, I already packed for you. I said, what did you pack? She goes, I just grabbed a box of bird dogs. I, it made me feel like the woman knows me. Here's how my days started. I'd wake up. I'd throw on my bird dogs. I'd make a cup of coffee. I'd just be in bird dogs, no shirt. I'd walk down to the beach to have my cup of coffee and a pair of bird dogs, no shirt. I'd finish my coffee. I'd go for a walk. Awesome because they had this great uh, custom inner, inner liner that never rides up. I'd go for a two-mile walk in the morning. I come back, I jump in the water. I get out of the water, come back. I get in the hot tub and I, I get all sun. I, mean, I then hang out in my bird dogs. These are awesome. Because the best part is I, when I did take them off, I threw in another pair of bird dogs. Bird dogs have joggers with built in silky soft inner liner that never rides up. And I would wear them to dinner. I spent every day in my goddamn bird dogs. 
Go to birddogs.com and enter the promo code BEARS, and they're going to throw in a free bird dog whistle football. And I'm telling you at the beach, I wish I had that whistle football. That's birddogs.com, promo code BEARS, and boom, a free bird dogs football with your pair of bird dogs. I am promising you right now, you will never take these things off, I promise you. It is. You want to know secret? Secret time, secret time? Secret, secret time, time secret on time? the podcast into a microphone. So, uh, so Leanne taught, I think, have we talked about this on the podcast, Nadav? I don't know what you're about to say. Leanne taught Push how to do it. Push. Christina. Pre- oh, oh yeah. right, right. She have we talked about this? Wait, uh, she gave her BJ tips. I think I think they've talked about it on on their podcast before. Maybe when they took over Two Bears. Yeah. Wow. She got to talk to my lady. It, Leanne. I don't want to. I don't want to. So like, I don't want to um, give away her secret. Well, so so here's the deal. So her. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck it. Right. Yeah, fuck it. It's your She's, call. I mean, yeah, it's a it's compliment. Yeah, it's, it's a compliment. She's good at it. She, her blowjob is involved, right? Sure. So it's, what she does is a thing called edging. Oh, I know about edging. She gets you to the point where your body's vibrating and you're holding on. And then all of a sudden she's like, all right, now here we go. So, but it's involved. And so it's, it's like a, I mean, it can be like a 15 minute blowjob. Yeah. So it's a lot of work for her. So she, w- she didn't want to do it all the time. Dr. Drew's wife, I, they must have talked about this. Yeah. Dr. Drew's wife, by the way, Leanne doesn't even know it's called edging. She just knows what she's doing is getting you up here. And I talked privately, and I won't share everything, but I talked privately to Tom about it. And it's it, and she gets you to here, and then she lets you get here, and then fucks with you, yeah. fucks with you, so that uh, my dick's getting hard talking about this. I'm oh not even joking. My God, I'm not same. even joking. I'm not even joking. This is hot. And, and then all of a sudden, you're like, you're making noises you can't control. You're going, huh? Yeah, huh, yeah. Huh, huh. And then when when you have an orgasm, it's not like just a t- your body goes ha ah, 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 ha <laughs> like it's fucking insane. Wow, can insane. I get a tissue? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. So um so that but she said she's like I don't it takes a long time. It's a lot of work on her part. But couldn't so she, she do it without the edging so, and so, just knock it out if doc, you you know you got a quick day? No, Dr. Drew's wife said uh you know sometimes you can just suck his dick a little bit and then fuck and because i have found that a little bit of blowjob before sex warms you up gets your dick ready to feel of course it senses it gets your senses going and then the sex is better so now every time we have sex we get a little bit of that and that and then every now and then every now and then so we go down there and you can just see her put on the hard hat and clock in and go and then you're and my dick is actually hard right now yeah And, and you and you and you're like here we go. Yeah, see, you know what doesn't work is the opposite where, like, I'll be banging my lady, and I can tell I'm about to finish, but I don't want to finish because I want to actually satisfy her. So I'll pull out and start going down on her to try to, like, buy me some time. Yeah. And it always is like, what are you doing? This is this is nothing. Like, yeah. you're killing me here. Well, you know, it's one one of the cooler things is when you have sex and you're, you're improving. And yeah. You're, but, like, not when you're married that you don't always improv like that. It needs to be, like, a date night. You need to be in a hotel. Yes. You need to be drunk. So true. And 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 your bed is so boring. You've done it a million times. It's, yeah. it's rote. It's it's almost like uh like I have I've said some horrible things about it, but like it's uh it's it's not as it's it's you need to do it to, mm. to keep the relationship. I, for me, it's about a connection. Uh-huh. But those special times in sex, you're like, oh, bring this shit. Like, oh I'm, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I I mean, but it can't be every time. You know, it's like you can't have Christmas every day. You got to have the normal rollover, hungover, you know, poker in the back with the boner sex. And then sometimes it's got to go balls to the wall. I remember one time having one of those nights of sex, one mornings, and she was like. The lazy ones? Yeah, 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 yeah. She was laying on her stomach, and I just kind of came up behind her, and I was kissing her back or whatever. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm moving away from it. Yeah. And so I kind of, she's laying on her stomach. I go in, and I'm having sex with her and she's still laying there and all of a sudden I go are you awake ah. <laughs> she was like I, I am did you think I was asleep I was like no but I, I just halfway in I'm like are we yeah I haven't heard a noise or it's anything. so crazy because you only know Leanne as like a mom yeah like it's so that and I think most people only know Leanne as like as like this like it's funny it's funny because I've shared so much of my life that I have a hard time talking bad about Leanne on stage because people lose I lose them. Well, she's so lovable and she's so oh. nice and kind that uh, this is blowing my mind. All this BJ talk—it's like hearing Mother Teresa did anal. 
You know, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I didn't know that side of you. She's, that's what I fucking love about her. Is that I, t- I said it on somewhere. I don't know where I said it. I know I said it, though. I know I, knew, I, know I told Tom. Tom, Tom pulls up, calls me one day, and he's like, hey, uh, come outside. And I was like, all right. So I go outside, and he has a McLaren. Mm. And he was like, he was like uh, let me take you for a ride. So we get in this McLaren. We go over to the 101. He takes me on the 101, and he, I don't like it. I don't, I'm not a big, despite the fact that I'm a part owner in a race team, I'm not a big car guy. <laughs> yeah. And it makes me uncomfortable. It was, I'm scared. I'm just scared because I know that it can go wrong. And Tom loves it. And he fucking paddled, da, 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 da. And we go. 110 miles within a quarter of a mile yeah and, and, and miles per hour and and then he gets off and i said you know leanne actually is a car person can you will you take her and he goes yeah so leanne he oh put boy. gets leanne in the car and roadhead and he <laughs> he takes her up on the 101 and he punches it uh-huh. and, and we get back and he goes i've never seen that side of her Oh really? And he goes. I said, "Oh, that's right." I go, "That's what it's like when you have sex with her." And he was like, "What?" Uh, I said, "That's who she is <laughs> in sex. Like she's this like put together person. Yeah. But when she has sex, there's this." And he goes, "Bert, she was kicking the dashboard Whoa. and screaming, going, oh, fuck, fuck yeah, Tommy, fuck yeah, Tommy.'" Oh, I said, shit. "That's." I go, "That's, that's who you have sex. That's that's the closest you'll ever have to have sex with my wife." Damn. So literally, he goes. Uh, he literally, we get the race car, and he's like. We're talking about we got to put an, uh, a captain seat in it, another seat in it, so he can have his coach ride yeah. with him. And he was like, well, i got to take Leanne around the track in this. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's well, fun I, to watch her lose control. Yeah, but you know, let him uh, work her up, then she'll come home to you. Uh, we fucked that day. Hey! Yeah, we actually fucked that day. There you go. She, I think as you go up in the south and... and uh, that engine revving, you know, it turns her on. It's like yeah. Georgia shit. All those... What's your, Duke's a hazard. What are the secrets about your chick? Like, like... She well, I mean, I don't know how much I can say, but she is she private. Ah, eh, she's cool. She's a she's an open casket, but she's uh <laughs> she likes she likes uh insults and be mean to me and hold me down and you really? know you know really degrade. Really, yeah, which is, I feel weird doing because I like her. Yeah, you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, you're lazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the weird thing. You're like, uneducated. Yeah, yeah, not all insults are sexy. Like, you're a bad driver. You know, your food, your cooking sucks. But, uh, yeah, it's bad, though. One time we were fucking and, you know, call me a whore, call me a slut, call me a, tell me I'm this. And I was like, ah, oh, you fucking retard. <laughs> and that did not, that didn't go over well. She was like, what are you doing? I was like, ah, sorry. I'm trying to think of the meanest thing. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> so that didn't fly. But, but yeah, she's, uh, she's. She's better in in bed, I think, than I am. So it's like I gotta like step it up. It's like when you have to follow a guy who killed, and you're like, I gotta kill now. Oh, that's fun. Leanne's better in bed than I am. Oh yeah, way better, way better to the point where I think, I think sometimes it's like she watches me and she's like, just like she's laughed at me a lot during sex. Yeah, that's the word. Me she, too. She laughed one time when I had my orgasm. I was like having an orgasm, and she started laughing, and I go. What are you doing? That's not cool. Yeah, and I was she's like, what? It was just funny. And I was like, yeah, but don't, like, when a guy's at his most vulnerable, he's like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, and you're like, uh. Right. Well, one day when she has one, you can laugh at her. But, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> can I tell you, honestly, when we first started dating, we could have, I could give her orgasms from sex. Yeah. Once she had a baby, I couldn't give her orgasms from sex anymore, like from just sex. Yeah. Because, you know, they, I mean. It's you're, different. Well, Dave, it's 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 like a jigsaw puzzle, Mark. Mm. The uh, I don't know if you know anything about the jigsaw convention happening in Las Vegas this year, but um, the it's it it everything's put back together, and it's not it's like a jigsaw, but if if you did it blindfolded and drunk, and then they're like it needs to be done in an, in a minute, right? And you were like, or we kill you, and you just push jam the pieces yeah. in. That's what the vagina looks like after after they have babies. Well, it's like uh, when you. <clears throat> You got a bag of cereal in a box, and then you pour it all out, and you try to get the bag back in. It doesn't work. You know, it's a great analogy. It's yeah. a, it's, it's a, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like, imagine if you get done Thanksgiving, and they're like, "Hey, can you put that turkey back together?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's all stuffed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, uh, and so, I went. Isla was born. Isla was born. So, a solid. Four years, George, George and I are two years apart. 
So it was a solid two years, two and a half years with her not having an orgasm. I was watching. I, I got, I mean, like, and you, you got to be honest with everything. I yeah. was watching Cat House on HBO. Oh, I remember Cat House. And uh, the girl on Cat House said, uh, can I show you how to give a woman an orgasm? And the guy's like, yeah. She goes, all right, go down on me. And he goes down on her. She's like, all right, take your f- tongue and gently flick her on my clitoris. And I was like, in my head, I had never done that. I, oh, yeah. I, had, I had a move I had read in Playboy when I was in ninth grade. Not the alphabet shit. No, no, no. I did. I would. Th- the move I did was uh, put your lips around her, draw, suck her clit into I your mouth. I heard this. And then do it there. But for some women, not every woman's the same. It would work with other chicks, but it didn't work with Leanne. Leanne was like, no. I don't. By the way, Leanne's going to fucking hate this episode. Well, you said she's great in bed. She's yeah. sexy. I think this is. It nice. never worked on Leanne. It never worked. She didn't like it, and she, and and then I and then I I watched Cat House, and as they said that, I went, "That doesn't work." And then I thought, "Oh wait, maybe I can." Like it's like the first time someone says, "Yeah, you can leave your butter on the counter," and you're like, "Yeah, but my mom keeps it in the fridge. You always keep it in the fridge." And oh right. Someone's like, "Yeah, but don't you like soft butter?" And you're like, "But you can leave it on the counter." And yeah. Like, yeah, I do it all the time. And you're like, "I won't get sick," and you're like, "Oh, that's how I felt about this." So. That afternoon, the next afternoon, uh, girls are in preschool. Isla's down for a nap, and I, George's in preschool. Isla's down for a nap, but whatever. I don't know, we're alone. Yeah, we go upstairs. It's the middle of the day. Oh yeah, and I try what the woman on Cat House said, and I mean, within a minute, come on, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. And, and I'll tell you, if you're a guy and you're thinking about how to give a woman oral sex. I think you always start soft. That that was my thing is I would start hard. No, I go in, I go in like I go in like Mike Tyson, like going go go go. <laughs> and and the gentle teasing, the gentle playing. Yeah. And then I like perf- I, I've gotten good at it. I've gotten really good. But you know, Whitney Cummings one time said, "Not all women like the same thing." I but know. I get so I'm so good with Leanne that I part of me goes, "Ah, mine's foolproof." You know right, what I mean? Right. Right. But they're all different. But uh, Nikki Glazer said that too. You got to suck the clit like it's a little dick, because they have the, this uh, tool called the womanizer, and it's a yeah. little suction thing. Yeah. Where we think it's all lick and and up and down, like painting a fence. That's what I was told. Paint the fence. Paint the fence. Or or flicker. But I think it's the like suck. in Tom Sawyer. Yes. Yes. Say the <laughs> n word. The whole thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's different for everybody. <laughs> uh, you talk about awkward uh, one night stands. Here's here's one of my weirdest. I uh, hooked. This is Florida years ago, Fort Lauderdale, something like that. And I hooked up with a lady, hot older mom lady. We're fooling around in the, her bedroom, big house, like pool, the whole thing. And turns out she's divorced. Great, whatever. So we finish, and I wake up in the morning. I'm hungover. She's not there. I go out in the the living room. She's making breakfast. I was like, oh, that's fun. And her two kids are sitting there, like 14-year-old boys. And I eat with them. No. I have a bowl of cereal. The kid hands me the Apple Jacks. I pour the milk in. We're just talking. It was a Saturday morning. It was brutal. And they knew what it was. I knew what it was. She was into it. It was weird. No. She drove me home. Are you serious? I mean, after we dropped them off at softball practice, (laughs) she drove me to my hotel. She pulls up and says, Mark. Call me when you need me to pick you up. <laughs> All right. She gave me a juice box. How old was she? That's probably 45. Oh, that's fucking so hot. Oh, it was hot. I remember we fucked on a pile of laundry. Yeah, it was great. Oh, the only thing that would make that better is if it just came out of the dryer. Oh, I wish. I oh, wish. No. If that's a mom fucking move. She pulls out and she's like, comes in. <clears throat> She got all the laundry, and you're in bed naked, and she goes, hot laundry, hot laundry. <laughs> hot laundry could be a big one. Hey, that's, that movie was hot laundry. Dude, we used to say that to the girls. Whenever the girls, <laughs> whenever we get done laundry, the girls would be on the, always on the couch watching TV or something, and I'd come in, and i go, hot laundry, everybody. Yeah. Hot laundry, hot laundry, and I'd throw hot laundry on them, and, and it's the best feeling ever. It feels so it good. It feels so good until... You get a pair of jeans on a zipper gets on a little nah, girl, t- and you you hear a zipper, zipper, <laughs> zipper, zipper. <laughs> okay, so hot laundry good. Hot zipper la- is an insult. Yeah. I guess a real zipper. Oh, yeah. Although that might be a racial slur, if I'm not mistaken. Cut that out. I think it is. That was an accident. It's a slippery slope. I think most people watching this want to know how your brain works. 
Uh, I don't know. It's not pretty. But but like but like, do you? Because I know I know that you you've gotten in trouble for your 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 the fact that you literally are unfiltered. That right. it's almost like it's almost like there's no middleman. You are you are CEO to bottom level employee. Yeah, like meaning like the CEO would come in and go. Why is no one working? Right. My Porsche is out of gas. I need gas. And yeah. everyone would be like, hey, man, let's, let's, let's water that down until it takes us little them. HR. But like you, your brain is so fascinating because you are the, you're the, well, you and, and I have to say this, like, and I, and there's a lot. I can't just say this oh, because no. there's a lot of great comics, but like you and Sam are my two favorite joke writing comics out there. You're oh, just thanks. fucking everything. You already are there before anyone's thinking about it. Well, I think uh, I don't know about the the joke writing thing, but like when I grew up, we would say crazy shit with our friends, and I thought, okay, this is funny. We're all having fun. We're being funny, and then you would do that kind of humor on a mic or in a show, and people were like, Jesus, and I'm like, oh, this is what I thought was funny. It's like it's like a chef being like, this is what I grew up making, and you think it's too spicy, yeah, but that's just how I grew up Ooh, eating. You're Korean food. I'm Korean food, baby. Korean food. That's so interesting because I, I listen to David uh, David Cho. Yeah, uh, the 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 chef. He's got a show on uh, Netflix, uh, Hot Delicious, or something, something like that. He is, well, by the way, he is a he is a David Chang. I'm sorry, David Chang. David Chang uh, talked to Aziz Ansari mm -hmm. about what it was like to grow up. You know, it's so. What's so interesting is to to back this up. If you said to me 10 years ago about representation, I don't think I'd understand it, right? I'd be like, like I'd be diversity? Like, yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like no, no, I, yeah, but there, what do you, what do you mean? I don't understand you. I, like, sure, but everyone, isn't everyone on the same playing field? Right. But you don't realize it until you hear David Chang and Aziz Ansari were talking about what it was like to grow up with parents who were uh, not first generation immigrants, I guess, immigrant parents yeah. who were making ethnic food and then sending them to school with ethnic food. Right. And how it feels now. To watch people appropriate ethnic food, white people appropriate it and go, kimchi is amazing. Yeah, but but uh, need, I don't think. Or, but David Chang would have to go to school with Kim. I apologize if he's not Korean, but uh, I don't. I'm, I'm just. I'm not certain of his. But I, I'm almost certain he's Korean. But uh, yeah, I hate when people get mad about that. Like if you got if you thought I was Canadian, I don't flip out. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, if, if someone's like he uh, he's yeah, he's Korean. Oh, thank I, God. I, I think I'm using kimchi as an example. Thank fucking God, man. We just saved our careers. Yeah. Mark. Kimchi. That could have been bad. But, uh, but he he would go to school with Kimchi and people would be like, what the fuck? Your bag smells like shit. Yeah. And it probably yeah. did compared to bologna sandwiches. Of course. And and then now, now to see people celebrate Kimchi. Right. It's got to be fucking weird. And that's your personality. <laughs> like you're Kimchi. Oh, hey, I'll take it. Like, like everyone around you as a kid was eating it and loving it. And then it, at first take, everyone's like, whoa. Right. But now people are like, dude, that shit's great in eggs. Well, some people, some people still hate kimchi and some people still hate my humor. So you're never going to get everybody, but this is just what I grew up doing. But it's, it's, it's crazy. a good analogy. Is that, is that, is that people, if we're going to talk about David Chang and use this as an analogy, it's the same, the same thing with your humor as David Chang's restaurant, right? It's, it is, I, I don't even know if he has a restaurant right now, please, so we can promote David Chang's restaurants. Go Chang. Because I... Dude, this guy's show is so fucking great. Great show. He's the coolest dude. DM'd him one time. Oh, fucking, yeah? He's got Fuku. Oh, P.F. Chang's. That's not his. <laughs> Fukumoto? <laughs> hey, can you fucking just Fuku... Momofuku... Fuku Moto. Fuku Moto. I think these are his restaurants. They're all in New York. Yeah. He is, he is one of the most... He's a great follow on Instagram. Can you pull up his Instagram so we can promote him? Only because I really love this dude. Yeah. And, and watching his series... I don't think it was his intention, but or maybe it was. And he was like, "Yeah, it was, Bert." And that's why morons like you figured feel like you figured it out on your own. But like, I felt like I learned more about how to understand people and their path and their journey. But much like David Chang's restaurants, imagine someone like a real moron going, "I don't like kimchi." Yeah, and then standing outside his restaurant and going, "Fuck kimchi!" Uh -huh. Fuck your restaurant! Right? You're like, "Hey, man." We're not making this food for you. Yes, that's that's our our comedy. We're making it for the people that love it. Yet there are people. Oh yeah, we're standing outside David Chang's restaurant, going like, "Kimchi's stupid." Yes, and he's like, "Okay, 
Imagine how he would, this is how you should feel about people who don't like your comedy. He's just, he has a video one time. I am sorry that my brain doesn't work this great. He has a video of him making his uh, son, I think he's a son or daughter. I'm so sorry, am I getting canceled? Uh, <laughs> I, it's it's a baby, so I couldn't tell. But he's yeah. making making them breakfast, and he's talking to his wife, and they're playing the Frozen soundtrack. Uh. And he was, and I thought it was his wife singing, <laughs> and I was like, she has the most magical fucking voice. <laughs> she's in the background, and then she shows up, and it's not her. But but I, I was, I'm sorry. Well, you assume I, I get that. You assume Asian people are just they're just magical. They're talented in a lot of ways. So you're like, oh, he's a great chef. His wife's probably a hell of a singer. When did you when did you learn? When did you learn about Asia? Meaning, growing up in New Orleans, pretty early. It's a it's a big continent. <laughs> I heard about it pretty soon, and I saw Asian people. I was, but it was all kung fu. That was it. That's all yeah. we knew. Yeah, that's and my, Chinese that, food. That's what I'm talking about. And sushi. About. Yeah, it was well, just food and and movies. But but like, I, I, so so here's my question. I'm, I'm I I phrased that phrase that wrong. I have a buzz. <laughs> um, that was a stiff drink, and you need to catch up. I'm trying, but I got a late. I got a pod later. I'm trying to uh, don't 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 don't. You know what? I would I love you too much to let you go to Rogan fucked up. Get fucked up at Rogan. I'll get fucked up there. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Have a little let sip. Me, but... Let me do one sip just to kill the the head. Yeah, headache. When did you learn about Asia? Meaning, like, God damn it, I said the fucking same stupid question. Well, my brother was uh, goth and loved Bruce Lee. He loved anime. He loved all that shit. And so I always looked at it like, oh, my brother was like a nerd, and I was like, oh, that's he's a lawyer now, right? No, he's a computer programmer. He's oh, a brilliant so, guy. Yeah. But he was into like all that kind of shit where I like skateboarding and wrestling and all this other stuff. So I thought he was like a dweeb, you know, a goth and his fingernails are painted black. But he loved Asian culture, like had a sword, really? you know, he loved anime, he loved all that shit. And he had the books, the graphic novels. But I didn't get into it. But uh, that's I was introduced to it pretty quick. And then we all loved, you know, Bruce Lee. No, and- but, but when did you realize the um complexity of asian culture meaning like so i had chinese food growing up first yeah. time was on, on uh on fletcher avenue uh i got a poo poo platter yeah. i loved it i loved it. i thought it was the coolest thing in the world yeah i loved but it but no register for and I, no idea that there were that there were vietnamese people right. Mom, like no right. no idea that how complex asian culture is i just wrote it off to everyone and I'm, but i'm a kid Everyone's Chinese, right? Yes. Then in high school, I had sushi with... Uh, that was a big deal. My my girlfriend, Julie. She took me to get sushi. She was a cool chick. She Inter- was cultured. She yeah. knew about sushi. She had a Honda Prelude. Red Damn. Honda Prelude. She was all in. And she didn't shave the top of her legs. Like what? You see blonde hairs on the top of her legs. I remember being like, oh, that's odd. Oh, that so odd. she um, took me to get sushi, and I love sushi. Once again, did not know it was Japanese food. Right. Thought it was Chinese food. It was, oh, it's a different type of Chinese food. College, I go to eat. I, I take my girlfriend towards the end of college to a Chinese restaurant. We had made a bong that was six feet tall, and we called it The Worm, mm. and because of Dennis Rodman. Uh-huh. And and it, we take we took a bunch of bong hits and went to get sushi, and I well, asked for a poo-poo platter, and they were like, <sighs> We don't have a poo poo platter. I said they're really good. Can yeah. We just, can you make one? And they're like, and they were like, we, that's not on the menu. We don't have it. And I went, <laughs> I'm not really sure. I said, what do you have? And they said sushi. I went, okay, sushi is good. We got sushi. I, I'm being, I'm being as honest as I can be, and I think the only thing you can ask for me is honesty. In, I, I had a joke about this. In, I was 29, 28, and I was with Dr. Ken. Mm. and uh ken jong and i I ended up writing this became a joke i put i'm sure i should put in a special and two asian people were at the end of the hallway at the ontario improv and they were arguing with the security guard in uh i'll just say in their native dialect there you go and i said to dr Mm -hmm. ken this is gonna sound horrible i said i think your parents are trying to get in (laughs) Seriously, or were you joking? I'm, I'm, no, I was being That's dead, a good I was joke. Being dead serious. And he goes, he I was being dead serious. And yeah. he went, What? And I said, Are you That's funny. Are those your parents? And he went, they were older. And he was like, But there's two older Asian people arguing with the 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 guy and they didn't speak English very well. Right. And they were arguing with this black security guard at the end of a hallway. Yeah. And I thought I just assumed they're trying it was by the way, so the Ontario improv, it's that back hallway, and we were back there, 
there's a, like the green rooms here, and yeah. then you go out the door, and there's a back hallway. Yeah. So I figured they were trying to get backstage. I figured there was parents. Oh. And, like I figured they were trying to get backstage. That's not so bad. Yeah, it's not. No, no. And so he goes, "Those aren't my parents." And I said, <laughs> "I said okay." And and I said, uh, "I said, what are they saying?" And he, goes, <laughs> and he goes, "I don't know. I don't. I don't speak Japanese." And I said. No, but like, what are they kind of saying? Yeah. And he goes, what do you mean kind of saying? I said, like, are you picking up words? He goes, they're different languages. I go, no, I, I, I get that. But like, what are they, like, are you hearing words that you recognize? Yeah. Like, do you, like Italian and Spanish or, right. or like New York and Boston. And he was like, and he goes, I don't kind of speak Japanese because <laughs> I'm Korean. And I went, but yeah, but they're the same language, right? And he was like, no, no, I said it before. I'll say it again. They're different languages. Yeah. I went on stage that night, told that joke. I was like, I, I literally went. I thought I thought I was gonna get a standing ovation. I yeah. said, "Did you guys know that Japanese and Chinese are different languages?" And the place lost it. That's funny. And I sat there and I'm, I'm the idiot going. I said, "You guys knew that? I didn't know that." And I said, "I thought it was like like Italian Spanish, uh, 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 French." Fr no, yeah, and 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 I said, I and then I and then I turned that into a bit. It was I turned it into a bit that was a little funnier is quicker yeah but like yeah. I, that was at the moment and then I, I was 20 i was probably 27 28 that is when i understood how the I, I, complexity is the wrong word but the com, the vastness of asia yes yes it's and, crazy. and it wasn't until i met russell peters that i understood uh uh, Indian dudes are Asian too. I know, isn't that a mind fuck? Because when people say I have an Asian fetish, they're never talking about Indian people. Yeah, right. Oh, by the way, I have an Asian. You Indian, got an Asian fetish? Indian women are so oh, fucking hot. Indian women are beautiful. I, and like, that's the one thing I fucking when, when I look and I regret my life. It was that I didn't because I think Asian, I think Indian women, Indian women, Asian women, whatever, Indian women are fucking. Beautiful. They're like magical. They look like princesses. Their eyes glitter and they got the hair, the beautiful black hair. But this is the problem, though. A lot of people just, if you get that wrong with the countries and all that stuff, people just assume it's hateful. But you're like, no, I'm just dumb. I just don't know. Teach me. Because we love to call everybody racist now so quickly. Like, I remember I saw the movie Big Daddy in the theater with two black guys, two friends of mine. And these white guys started fighting in the front row and like arguing with each other. And my black friends are like, Go get your people. Go get your people. You know, fuck yeah, around. Yeah. Like, tell them to shut the fuck up. You're white. They're white. Tell them. And it was funny. Whatever. Yeah. We're laughing. But I think if a white guy does it, it just looks worse. Like, hey, uh, you're black. Go tell them to stop rapping or whatever. Yeah. You know, but it, you're just trying to be funny. Also, I, I'm, I'm aware of the irony of the black guys telling the white guys in the movie to shut the fuck up. But still, it's not always rooted in hate. It's just... You look like them. I'm being ignorant for humor's sake. Yeah. Go get them. I, You're I, one uh, of them. I, last night we had dinner at a place where there was two transgender people. Am I right on that, Nadav? Yes. And, uh, and I will be very real. I was hardcore attracted to the, the one that I don't, I, I want to say the, the dude. I think they're both, they're both, they were both born dudes. Yep. And there are women yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And man, that bartender, she turned into something that was like out of a fucking Richard Linkletter movie. Leah Thomas? N no. That's, you know, that's wait, a Leah, swimmer. Leah, oh, oh, oh. I, th I thought you said the girl from Back to the Future. Leah Thompson. Yeah, I know Leah Thompson. Hold on. We got to stay on one thing here, <laughs> BK. Uh, My buddy's dating Leah Thompson's daughter. Wow. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he told me, her, uh, uh, I forget her name, Zoe. It's her name, Zoe. My buddy's dating her. And he told me, and I was, I was like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not really good with like young actors and actresses. Me neither. And uh, he Pete told Davidson me is. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the weird thing. We're getting older now, so like hot women when when I was younger have hot daughters that are like of age. He told me, and I kept going, "Hold on, hold on, one second. Your girlfriend's mom's the, the is from Back to the Future." Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, why? Did you watch that movie?" And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" And I kept going, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But my girlfriend's a very successful actress. Also, I go, "Fuck that." Her mom is fucking and then he goes her dad's donnie deutsch and i go whoa that's why i'm like fucking losing my shit wow. and, he, and, and, and 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 jimmy tetro is his name and by the way i apologize jimmy if these are all secrets i'm so sorry <laughs> but like 
I didn't even know they were married. Dude. How hot is Donnie? Donnie Deutsch is gorgeous. Leah Thompson. Great head Leah of hair. Leah Thompson? Thomas? Thompson. Am I, am I, is gorgeous. Oh, and, yeah. And by the way, their daughter is a very attractive young lady. But like. Wow. What a couple. There she is. Dude. Cute, cute lady. She was in everything for a while. She was. I Ben, she sail, still sails the boat, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. She's hot laundry. Hot laundry. <laughs> Wait, what was what were we talking about before we got on this uh, Marty McFly's I mom? I have no idea. Bert Hold liking on, I, dudes, I think. What? what was it? I think it was Bert being attracted to a dude. Oh, the trans ladies. Yeah, at yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. You know what's fun about trans people is... Uh, you know, a lot of women get mad if you objectify them. You know, like, hey, hottie. They're like, hey, don't objectify me. But if you objectify trans women, everybody loves it because uh, you're like open minded, I guess. Oh, I was I was definitely down for objectifying our bartender. Yeah, she was she was very sexy and kind of clearly trans, if that makes oh, sense. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Well, some are very. It's like I, I was talking to nah, Nadav about it pretty aggressively. You know, yeah, you yelled it into my ear thinking you were whispering. Ah. Oh. That's what you yell. <laughs> that trans chick is fucking hot. Yeah. She looked like, honestly, like she was out of a Rick, Richard Linklater movie. <laughs> Bert was hammered. He's like, look at that transformer. <laughs> oh, I'd love to fuck her. But it's so funny but when we're talking about what the, I wish, I wish people understood. I, and the, Okay. I don't, the, I know this is going to be a horrible statement and I, I'm, and you can take this out of context, but the enthusiasm to show someone you're not a bad person is is an authentic enthusiasm, especially for whitey. Yeah, for, if you're a white guy you, and you and like you're sitting next to a person of color, sometimes sure there is a there is like a, I want to let you know I'm not one of the horrible I know, ones, but you don't want to go too far. And, and so, the, so the, the the key is not to speak at all. Yeah, the key is to ignore them. Treat if them you equal. ignore them, you're treating them equally. Exactly, because you would ignore a white person. Exactly, you would. I would. I would with, spit on a white without, person. Without, I'd spit on him. I'd, I'd call him the N word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all full circle. <laughs> That's so, funny. You call a black guy the N word, like no, no, I would do this to a white guy. Yeah, I would do this to a white guy. This is I'm treating you <laughs> as an equal. But it's it's true. Is like you would it, you would authentically ignore a white person. You would yes, never talk to them. Hundred percent. But but, if, but if you're sitting next to David Chang in a plane and he pulls out Kim Chi, you have this compulsion it's a compulsion as a white person to lean over and go i actually love korean food i know and it's the fucking cringiest thing you can I say know. but it's better than the other way better than going hey you fucking whatever. it's better it's better than like ugh, the fuck is that yes shit? but you what i think two white guys explaining race uh, what i think what the the key is to just ignore him entirely well and, and no 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 but but that's how you that's equality it's like yeah it's like same with hot chicks. Treat them as fat chicks. Right. Like if you right. sit into a hot chick, you, it's the same. That is it. Tell me if I'm right on this. Okay. It's the same impulse you have when you sit next to a beautiful woman, sometimes as a white person. I can't wait to go up to a next hot chick I see and go, what's up, pig? <laughs> <laughs> see how that goes. <laughs> All right. Sorry. You no, know, it's it's sometimes you sit next to a hot chick, you want to talk to her. You want to say hi. You want to of course. interact. Sometimes you sit next to like, like, uh, like, a, a black dude, like especially like if you, like I sat next to um, I sat next to uh, Kellen Winslow. Kellen Winslow one time is a uh, tight end for the Chargers oh, okay. back in the day, and his he had a bunch of sons or a son that had that played too. Well, that's a celebrity too. That's a little different. Wow, that guy's no. That's Kellen is his son. I think he's had oh, some okay. legal problems. I, like, I sat next to Kellen Winslow, and I, I had an impulse to talk to him. I wanted to I wanted to talk to him, and in a weird way, like I don't know. It's like. Uh, it's hard to explain. I, I maybe I'm not saying it right. Well, I think I audiences know. have that too. Like I think if I walk on stage, it's kind of like, all right, well, let's see what this guy's got. But I think if a black guy, an Asian guy, even a, a beautiful woman, it the audience is like, well, hey, let's this will be interesting. Yeah, I think it it perks them up a little bit, which is why it's good to have a a diverse show. Uh, I didn't realize this. I'm I'm really bad with recognizing diversity or stuff stuff like that. But uh, I'm I'm just. I'm blind to it. I like. Isn't that equality in a weird way? I, I, well, well, yeah. So like, we're on tour, and someone was like, you know, on my tour bus, someone was like, yeah, man, I love. I they complimented me on on my diversity hiring, mm. and I went, huh? Yeah. I was like, I I don't do that. I mean, like, I don't. I like. 
<laughs> I don't do that at all. I don't do that at all. It's not uh, I, like it's not my wheelhouse. I'm not. I'm, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. And Ron, my poor bus, bus driver, was like, "You got like two white dudes on this tour." And I was like, "What?" He's like, "Well, Mans is uh, Indian. Oh yeah. Uh, Shane is Mexican. Jesus is Mexican. I'm black." Right. And I was like, I was like, I didn't do this on purpose, guys. Yeah. Like you guys are just my favorite people. Well, it's, like, it's, and so, and so, in a weird way, you go. The other day, I looked at the fucking lineup for Fully Loaded. It's it's a lot of three, women. It's three women, three men. There you go. And I went. I didn't do that. I definitely didn't do that. No, I mean, I mean, I'm being dead serious. But you did do that. No, but I just. But you not consciously. They, well, they were like, "Who do you want on the tour?" And I was like, "I, I go. I, I know I want." I mean, number one was a tell. I I wasn't going like. I need a Jewish man. Right. I need. I, I went. David Tell's the best comic I, I know. Agreed. He's my my goat. He's my white whale. Yes. Uh, I want David Tell. And then they're like, "Who else?" I go. Literally, the list was uh, obviously Mark Norman. No, I'm being like obviously because you know, I, anytime I do a big show, I always want yeah. there. Appreciate. I go Mark that. Norman, uh, uh, Nikki. I go. Oh, fucking Fortune would be fun as fuck. Oh, Fortune. I go Taylor. I, t- I tour with Taylor. Yeah, I tour with Taylor. Not as a, as as out of a diversity hire, but she is. She's a killer. She is without a doubt one of the funniest comics working. Yeah. And so is Nikki. So is Fortune. Uh, I go Big J. Oh, Sal would be cool. He's Puerto and the, Rican. And, and then and then and then and then they were like, "Great, let's start there and we'll see where we go." Yeah. I tried. I, and by the way, in the, in the initial list, and I not. I won't, I'm not going to say the names that passed. You need a black, I think. Well, I I, I I went to four. Oh, you went to four. But, but my, well, my, you know, my real second, second, second. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to. I don't want to. You know what I mean? It's like if you want to pass, pass, and I won't. Bring sure, it up. sure. But you know, I'm obviously my first. <laughs> don't. Oh, damn it. sorry, sorry. You just bleep, just bleep, bleep it, his name bleep out. It. Yeah. And so I went to him. I went to obviously some. I've had the people I've worked He's with amazing. in the past. There's a few people that I worked with in the past. On, on my television projects on Netflix. I went to all of them. Um, but it was, uh, I, w- I went to a bunch of people, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it in like a, give me one of these, give yes, me one of those. Yes. Like, I, I think that maybe is. That's we Hiring somebody based on their skin color or, or is, vagina or gay, it's super weird. That's what gross. Hollywood does in a weird I know. way. In a weird way, the, the real diversity is in comedy clubs. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But like, we comics just see funny. Yeah, and it, it it has the opposite effect where now I watch a lineup and I go, I wonder if he's here because of this or if he's here because he's in a wheelchair, he's trans or whatever. Yeah. And it like back in the day, I used to just watch Richard Pryor or watch Ellen or watch Carol Burnett, and I wasn't like, I'm watching a woman. I'm watching a black guy. Look at me. It was just, this is funny. Dude. It makes it makes you think it the other way now. I saw Greer Barnes the other day. Oh, Dude. beast. Dude, tough follow. Greer Barnes, Greer Barnes. I, I was, I was a little buzzed, and all I could say was, "The funniest man in this room, the funniest man in this city." This is my words to him. I grabbed him. He gave me a, like a, a handshake hug, you know, or dap or whatever. And I said, uh, <laughs> "I said, funniest man in this room, funniest man in this city, funniest man on the planet." Those are my three things I said to him. He is. Without a doubt, if you've never heard of Greer Barnes, uh, that man. He murders. The I'm, room is different after it, him. The room's different. Yeah. You can't follow it. There, That guy, you want to talk about big dick energy. Yeah. He walks on stage and he sucks you in. Yep. He holds you there until he decides he's done with you. And when he's done, he lets you go. Yeah. And when you come on stage after him, you're going like, um, uh, um. Am I bleeding down my leg? Motherfucker. Uh-oh. Um, Greer Barnes is the fucking funniest dude. He's the funniest guy, and he's just, uh, he's like a, a such a pro. Like, he's been there for 20 years, and I've never seen him have a weak set or rough set. It's never. I've never. turn a room, and I have to follow him all the time, and it's a nightmare. Dude, Greer Barnes is fucking a murderer. A yeah. murderer. Killer. I'm bleeding down my leg. What happened? I have no idea. Oh, I boy. I oh, shit. Yeah, he really is bleeding. Okay. Look at that. All right, maybe let's wrap. All um, right, all right. Uh, thank you for doing this. Hey, this hey. show is hot laundry. <laughs> um, uh, Do you have anything to plug? Sure. Well, check out the Fully Loaded Fest, first of all. FullyLoadedFestival.com. Uh, two weeks in June, in the middle of June, Mark Norman, Jay, Big J. Oakson, Nikki Glazer, Taylor Thomas, and Salvo Elcano, Dave Attell. Uh, who am I forgetting? Uh-oh. Myself? 
I think you got them. I got them. Fortune? Fortune Feimster. There you go. All right, I got two podcasts. Well, we might be drunk, which you did a, a epic three-hour one. It's doing great views, by the way. Oh, for real? You cried. Uh, I did? Yeah, it was crazy. You cried about a Whitney Houston story. I think you killed her. Ooh. And uh, Tuesdays with Stories, me and Joe List. I got a special on YouTube out to lunch. Got a thing on Netflix called The Stand-Ups. And, uh, oh, I have a Patreon called All Over the Road. I've been doing my own Patreon now. What is, is that? Is that uh, like a vlog type thing? Vlog type thing, yeah, like a Ooh. Casey Neistat. But I do videos. I do a, my own podcast on the road, just in the in the hotel with a Zoom, and it's getting real personal. Interesting. And, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I know John Manzel subscribed to that. Oh, get on it, Manzi, you fucking Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know you were Indian. Now I think uh, differently about you. He'll tell you he's Mexican also. Uh, he's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Hey. Love you, Tommy. Miss you, Tommy. Tommy, See thank you. See you next you. week. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur protology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two bears, one cave.